Dub Doubles, J Dog back here to finish us up with some goddamn questions on the last fucking video I left off on. And that video was the uh, Apocalypse Grades versus Hellhammer one. And I saw a few other questions that uh, were worth answering. So we'll get those knocked out and then we'll go on to the next video, which I have no idea what the fuck it is until I look at, look at it. So all questions completely raw dogged. This one, though, on the last couple on the previous were video are. What are your thoughts on theistic orthodox Satanism where you worship an actual being? You don't have much thoughts on it. I mean, like, kind of like, believe in what the fuck you want to believe in. I, I kind of would, uh, kind of when I get in that, it's like, why do you believe that? Like, off based off what? You know what I mean? Is it, I, I kind of get the vibe. It's a lot of the guys that follow that. It's for rebellious reasons or just tough guy reasons. It's like, to me, like, if you're going to believe in something, you, you kind of need some fucking evidence. And that's just the way I, I operate. For example, if somebody asked me, uh, like, do you believe in aliens and shit? I'm, I th it's like, I do and I don't. I think the possibility is definitely there, but there's not enough information to say that I do. I, I like the idea of it. I think it's pretty cool because, I mean, that'd be kind of fucking neat. You know, it's interesting to say the least. Um, but do I believe in it? I, don't, I mean, again, not, I mean, I haven't seen enough personal evidence. So if you're believing in some fucking uh, type of demon or, or Satan or devil, it's like that's basically the same as believing in, uh, uh, you know, a God with a fucking big beard and a fucking uh, pointed wizard hat in the sky pointing his thumb down. Now, maybe you don't agree with the ideology and the fucking uh, the rules to live by. And I get that. But like you're kind of coming up with this unpopular fucking faith. To where I don't know, you just read books on it. Maybe got it from the black metal bands you listen to and shit like that. And you're just randomly believing. Well, why do you believe it? Do you believe it just because bands you like sang about it? You call the topic. I get liking the topic and think it's cool and thinking it's cool uh, rebelling against the religion that was jammed down your throat. I get all that. But to say you truly believe in it, follow it based off what? Like where did you get that off? Again, I don't care what anyone does. That's just for me. It's kind of like I wouldn't be able to get behind something. Was like, well, where's your? If they're gonna tell me that there's some fucking being higher than me. To worship something other than myself. To me, I'm my own God. That's the way I look at it. To worship yourself, motherfucker. You know, believe in yourself and not some fucking idol God. You know, uh, that's the way I see it. But if, if there was something that you could prove that's better or worth worshiping, get behind. That's fine. I can, uh, that's cool. But give me some fucking evidence. Give me, give me some reasons. Give me some Give me some proof. You know what I mean? If you can't do that, well, then wipe, wipe your ass with it. You know what I mean? That's the way I see it. But it could be cool topics and shit like that. And I like, you know, as far as Satanism and darkness and shit like that and metal, that's the way I fucking prefer it. God damn it. Richard Wolf, K Dog. So now I'm K Dog. Yeah, J is right next to K. I'm assuming you just uh, put a K. So I'm, now I'm I Dog, J Dog, and K Dog, apparently. Go, you going to see Merciful Fate in Vegas? I doubt it. Um, but I, I wouldn't be against That'd be fucking awesome. I love Vegas and I love Merciful Fate. But I think I heard, when, I don't, when is it again? I'm hoping that they just do something closer. But uh, so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that would be a hell of a good time. And last question of this video that I do have an opinion about that I'm shocked anyone on here is asking. Uh, Carpenter Corpse. Hey, j Dog, what do you think of Paul Saladino, Carnivore MD? Bullshit or not? Uh, I think Paul Saladino is an interesting guy. Uh, I definitely watched podcasts with him and shit like that. And I watched. Do I think he's bullshit? I don't think he's bullshit. I just think it's an extreme diet that's. Anything that's an extreme is probably not the right way. It's probably something in the middle. But I definitely believe, you know, eating. Um, it's, I definitely agree with them more than the vegans. I mean, eating uh, non-processed animal uh, sources of protein are the best. I mean, it's some of the best shit you can fucking eat, especially um, from four-chambered four stomach uh, animals like cows and things like that. So beef, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, bison, fucking uh, venison, things like that. It's going to be better than uh, things like chicken and turkey because there's more uh, micronutrients in it. Um and I believe organs, you know, him eating organs, you know, uh, liver, pancreas, heart. Uh, yeah, very, very nutrient dense. Per dense. Per personally, I would never eat that shit because I think it's fucking gross as fuck. I'd probably literally throw up. Like liver, just it looks fucking disgusting. It smells disgusting. So I wouldn't do it. I just I would be literally gagging. But I get the point. I think it's healthy. Like all the vegans, animal products are bad for you and shit like that. No, not, no, that's that's fucking stupid. Um, and all the studies they show, but yet they've got that they'll show stuff on it, but it'll be on a guy eating a burrito at fucking Taco Bell. It's like, we're talking about eating animal products. We're not talking about that dumbass. We're talking about, like, for example, we're talking about eating a good grass-fed beef steak. That's good for you. Straight up fucking just is. Um, but so then, then, then all vegetables are bad for you, like he says, it's like that. I, I find that hard to believe. 
He's not he's not in the fiber. I really find that hard to believe because I use a, a psyllium based uh, fiber supplement and it makes a dramatic difference as to how I go to a bathroom. It's pro- it improved my LDL cholesterol and things like that. Helps improve blood glucose, things that you can monitor literally through blood work that are all very important health markers. So to say that's bad, but yet there's so, 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 so much fucking evidence saying otherwise, I don't agree beyond that. But uh, he's in the middle. I agree with a lot that he says. Uh, but keep in mind too, some of it I think it's kind of for um, kind of drawing attention as an extreme because he is selling products. Remember that. Anytime someone has something, what is their ulterior motive? That they're, are they just giving out free information? No fucking incentive behind it whatsoever? Well, no. When you break it all down, he's selling um, desiccated uh, organs and, uh, and uh, capsules and stuff like that, which I think is probably a good product to take. Don't get me wrong. I actually, to be honest with you, I actually thought about purchasing them, but they're kind of expensive. And a lot of the micronutrients, ah, I kind of already get these through the supplements I take and the foods I get. So I don't know. But still, I'm on the fence, and I might even still one day maybe buy uh, maybe three months worth worth of them, see how I feel. Um, maybe do it like three months out from my next blood work and see if it uh, changes any of my markers. I thought about it. So, but nonetheless, whether it, they they work, they don't work, or whatever, he has a vested interest in why he's giving some of this information because he's selling products behind it. So, don't think he's full of shit, but just a little exaggerated. You know what I mean? Balanced diets always be best. Fucking eat your animal sources of protein. You know, fish, meat, eggs, and then. Uh, if you start your carbohydrate sources from like oatmeal, rice, and potatoes, add in fruits and vegetables, you're good to go, bro. Bro, if you're just eating nothing but that stuff like that, you're going to be much healthier and better off, and lower body fat, feeling better, looking better than the average person. If you just did nothing but that, and so it's kind of like why overcomplicate something that doesn't be complicated. But nonetheless, I think he's an interesting fellow. Next goddamn video. That was the last question on that one. And the next video line is one of the greatest seven inches of all time, plus favorite album cover concepts. 12 days ago, 726 views, 84 motherfucking comments. So let's get a digging. Got the shovels, devils? Rotting. Keep from rotting here, comedy God. Keep an eye out for the, uh, I'm sure he's doing a layout. Maybe he's doing a layout, so keep an eye peeled in the next. By the time he finished the layout, pressing time and shit like that, the next, hopefully, pressing plants are improving their time frames. Next 12 to 14, 16 months, uh, Devils, keep your eyes peeled for Rotting Crushed on vinyl. Hell's fucking hell's headbangers. So this is from uh, the band Rotting. FG of the Forgotten, Lake and Everflowing Stream, and Left Hand Path with all Dan Seagrave paintings. Yeah, didn't I say that uh, because I was talking about the covers? Yeah, I am fully aware of that. And the thing is, is like, I think a lot of people have a boner over Dan Seagrave. Personally, I'm, I I, I kind of don't like those covers, to be honest with you. Because not because they're not that he's like, man, this guy can't paint. He just sucks. Not that. I'm just kind of like, what is this? Like, like, what, like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, FG the Forgotten. What is, what is this? Transformers? Left hand path. It's kind of like, all right, this kind of looks like a nice painting, but what, what does that have to do with fucking anything brutal or blasphemous or anything like that? And, uh, uh, like an ever flowing stream, kind of like, I don't know, maybe this is the gates of hell. I, I guess. I mean, it's, it doesn't suck. It's just kind of like, Personally, just hand me butchered at birth. I'm good to go. That's, to me, that was that's that's a cover. Self-explanatory. Once upon the cross, beat the uh, the inside. Open it up without the blanket on them. Self-explanatory. Serpents of light. Self-explanatory. Shit like that. Fucking pales. Organs thrown in a fucking crapper. Self-explanatory. That's the shit I like. You know what I mean? You know, kind of brutal, appalling shit. You know. That that says death metal, you know what I mean? Because, like, for example, somebody looks at, F, let's say a random person, Suffocation FG, they've forgotten, they see the cover, they don't know anything about death metal, but they heard a death metal, and they kind of, like, they maybe know, oh, yeah, that's like that heavy, real heavy stuff with rolling vocals. They're not going to look at that and be like, that's death metal. I guarantee you, they look like, hell, even look at Rotting Crush cover. That looks like death metal. Cannibal Chorus, Butcher Birth, that looks like fucking death metal. Tomb of the Mutilator, that looks like fucking death metal. Exhumed Gore Metal, that looks like death metal. Like, they just automatically see Whoa, what's this shit? That's what they're going to think. They're not going to think about that fucking Matchbox cars on the fucking Effigy of the Forgotten cover. Yeah, not ripping on a fucking fantastic album. A fucking 10, Devils. But just the cover, I was always like, what? This, this fucking sucks. Yeah, not sucks as in this guy can't paint. Just what the fuck? How's this represent? This, 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 doesn't look, this, this doesn't have death metal feel to me. That's all. Human brisket, god damn it. Hey, j Dog, I got a new question. Has any labels bought any of the rights from Hell's Headbangers? If any of the bands you worked with prior switch labels, wait, well, how many have they bought any of the right? Oh, okay, I see. For example, Midnight did that album off Metal Blade. Did they ever contact you about any of their other releases? Uh, 
They did. I mean, kind of like yes and no. It was because they were they did the back catalog, obviously. Kind of don't want to really talk much about that because I don't know like what's like just out of respect to Midnight Show. Like, like I don't want to give out like deals and shit like that. Here's what they wanted or give. You know what I mean? It's kind of like nobody's business, to be honest with you. Uh, personally, I don't care about talking about shit, but when it's not my business, like on that sense, like, hey, here's what Midnight got. I kind of don't. I don't really want to, um, I just don't want to really, you know, release that, but not too much stuff as far as like buying out the back catalog. Let's say like, I don't know if anyone's ever actually done that. Actually. Now I'm thinking about like, Hey, can I buy it? Just maybe like, Hey, can we uh, license this? We've definitely gotten that, especially like some, uh, foreign countries like do it on cassette and like, Hey, we'll send you 10% of the pressing kind of like what we did for like, uh, a lot of the early relapse stuff with all the mortician vinyls and shit. We licensed from relapse. The way we uh, paid them is, we did like a thousand LPs of each mortician and we send them a hundred copies. We didn't pay them cash. We sent them a hundred. So double LPs. So they probably sold those at 20 bucks a pop Two, they made two grand. They made two grand for l literally doing nothing. You know what I mean? So um, that's how they were paid. Cause they don't do, you know what I mean? We've had scenarios where it's the other way around. Yeah. We've had that, but not like, Hey, here's a check for 10 grand. Give me the back catalog. Um, I don't think that's ever happened. No. Vesuvia Corpse Flower, J Dog. Did you ever order anything from Redstream back in the cool from Redstream back in the day? I, you know, I don't think I uh my order days. I don't think I ever ordered from Redstream. We definitely traded with Hell's Headbangers with Redstream, but me, I don't think I ever because I always ordered from um uh, in my teenage years. I was ordering from Relapse Records was the number one, Central Media, Nuclear Blast, eBay. Then going to Brian Baxter's shop, picking shit up. Those are pretty much my main sources of how I was getting stuff. And then going to shows, like whoever, whether it been at a distro stand or was the actual band selling their own stuff. Uh, that's pretty much how I picked up all my metal back in the day. But yeah, it was called calling Redstream up or mailing them and stuff like it in my teenagers. I don't think I ever did. Oh, yeah, so let's talk about, so the Martire EP. I just put the most underrated EP in the subject. But, uh, yeah, guys, check out that Martire. Martire EP, you guys a fan? It's a fucking banger. That's for damn sure. J-Dog, uh, this is from Goat666DB. Uh, J-Dog, what do you think of some of the big name 80s hardcore bands like Agnostic Front? Crow Mags, Youth of Today, or Sick of It All? Um, the very first uh, Crow, Crow Mags, Age of Crow, I think that's a great album. It's the only thing I own by them. Uh, Agnostic Front and shit. I'm not as... I've listened to shit in the shop, and it's kind of like a super, super late to the game. And yeah, yeah, it sounds cool or stuff, but I don't I don't own anything. Sick of It All? It's funny because didn't they get like really kind of like crappy and trendy in the 90s? And that was always my take on them. So I didn't realize that they even kind of started in the 80s. So I kind of always had them in the automatic poser fucking, uh, you know, the, the the Pantera Club, basically, with kind of ignorantly so, because I didn't know they were around as long as they were. So I never really kind of went back. And Youth of Today, I don't even know if I've ever listened to anything by them. I know, obviously, I know who it is, uh, but I don't know if I've ever actually even sat down and listened to them. Because that whole scene, I just, again, I do like bands, and I've talked about, like, negative approaches, shit, what I like. Uh, I was never, that was just never like my scene that I was going through. Just some bands would slip through the cracks. I'm oh, this is great. And if I really liked it, I'd buy it. But most of the bands, I just never got it, even to this day, just never got around checking. My, I was always just kind of a in the metal scene. Maybe like stupidly so, and maybe take your blinders off, man. Like you should check out other stuff. Uh, and that, and, and I, I admit that that's that's true. I probably should. It's just you kind of like I'm definitely just a creature of habit. Kind of just like, oh, this is what I know. This is what I like. I mean, I don't know. The description said it sounds like fucking Exhum. It's probably good. That type of shit. You know what I mean? You kind of get stuck in a rut in a sense. But um. Yeah, so that's kind of what, yeah, I, that's basically what I think about them. <laughs> Pykel again, never answered my question, Pykel, what the fuck? Is that your goddamn name or what? My question of the day, have you ever got an email the next day from a customer <laughs> begging for a refund because the night before they went on a order? <laughs> the reason this is funny because I wouldn't say this has happened, but kind of has, I'll answer <laughs> 
uh, what the fuck are they all? They went on a ordering drunk binge and didn't realize they ordered two hundred dollars or more of items. If so, did you refund them or say tough shit? And so, <laughs> never got that to degree, but definitely got shit like, "Hey man, uh, I I, oh, I place this order drunk." Like, not necessarily cancel and refund. Uh, we do get those now almost. Definitely like a couple of week, hey, cancel and reform fund this just like for whatever reason. They don't give a reason or they say, uh, um, I, I, I like uh, one the other day. I know the guy's like, oh, shit, I, I, I didn't realize uh, I already own this album. Can I cancel refund it? Another one uh, cancel refund recently was like, hey, I pre-ordered this, but I didn't realize my wife pre-ordered it for me for my birthday coming up because she told me all right. So that way it was like, so cancel refund, things like that. But not $200 and hey, I, I regret this, but definitely kind of like, Hey, uh, can you tell me what I ordered? Because I was drunk as fuck. That I did like more emails than you can imagine. Were definitely people like I placed that order drunk. I've seen that several times. But yeah, the other thing I don't think anyone ever said I want to cancel because I was drunk. Yeah, but yeah, a lot of yeah people. Oh, I guess sitting there getting smashed and ordering. And I remembered it so well because the first time I ever saw that email, I was kind of surprised. I'm like, who the fuck is hammered and just go orders a bunch of shit? And uh, it just became a thing. I was like, oh, this is actually pretty common. Um, uh, which, hey, works for me. <laughs> Chris Howard asking for, uh, perfect headphones. Oh, bro, you're, and the technology shit, man. You got to ask Reaper about that, man. He's the guy, he's who I ask. I don't know fucking shit about nothing, man, when it comes to that stuff. I'm like total caveman. I, you know, I'm not, a lot of these things, I barely know how to turn on a computer. I mean, I'm not that bad, but I'm pretty bad. Shelby Shims, what's up, J-Dog? Have you ever met someone you thought was going to be a dick but completely surprised you? I got to hang out with Seth Putnam in Nashville way back, way fucking back in the day. Also, thanks for throwing in the HHR Cannibal sticker on my last order. Hail from Tennessee. It was a banger, wasn't it, bra bra? Yeah, Shelby, uh, I definitely have met tons of people that I thought would be a fucking dick and that turned out not to be. Um, the thing is, is uh, I'm drawing a blank as to who. I, 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 to give you an actual example. And, hey, you know, it's really funny. I've been told that many times, especially people at the gym and shit that maybe see me for years. They finally come up and talk to me. Obviously, they're not in the metal scene or whatever. But I, I've had two people for sure point blank tell me, like, yeah, dude, I thought you were going to be, like, the biggest asshole. And you're like, fuck, you're probably, like, the coolest guy in here. Um, like, literally point blank say that. Uh, so I know people thought that about me for sure. thought you'd be a fucking dick and, like, not at all what I thought you'd be. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I have had that. I'm trying to think who, uh, who'd be a fucking somebody to throw out there that you guys would know or name that I could use. Fuck, nobody's going to mind, but yeah, that's, that's 100% happened because I was, yeah, I, I remember walking away. Wow. That guy was actually super cool. Yeah. Like I'm surprised. Oh yeah. One of them kind of does come off to me. Uh, I don't know if you watched my shit or take offense or anything. I don't, I don't think you would. He's a cool guy. Uh, um, for whatever reason, I just got the uh, idea that he was going to be ultra cavalt. Grant, I kind of knew before I met him because uh, Reaper and shit uh, met him and he helped with them and played with them and stuff like that. Is uh, Impure Ath Chris from uh, Black Witchery? I always got the vibe that he'd be kind of like a stand off, all standoffish, super cavaltish, fucking just kind of a dick. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, not not at all. Like actually, I was actually. Uh, chatted with him quite a bit at fucking like head bash and shit. Really, really cool guy actually. And him and I actually, him and I actually have a ton of common music wise and shit. He used to work out and stuff. He used to ask, tell me, tell me and stuff and asking me about you know workout shit and uh, re like really really cool guy. And he I don't know, he loves cats too. Like he I, he has like he has like something crazy like nine cats, three dogs or stuff. Like I think he got kind of like goes on like an animal rescues in a sense, not to that degree, but like he's one of those like if he sees one, he's gonna take him home until at least get their home. So we kind of got a lot of shit in common. Um. But yeah, kind of him, like maybe not a dick. I just thought he was to be one of those ultra cavalt guys. But uh, and he, well, yeah, no, it wasn't at all. So, make this the last goddamn one. <laughs> what is he saying? <laughs> Got to read it off from Joe Dinkins, guy with the faith extractor dog. Uh, question: In my perfect world, Metallica breaks up after Injustice for All. Yeah. I kind of agree with that. I, I, yeah, I kind of do agree with that. Do you think in King Folly's perfect world, everyone in Metallica dies in the bus crash? <laughs> um, 
I don't know, maybe, probably. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, as far as the band wise. I mean, King's like one of those really cool, like, people, like, down, like he's the type of guy I get the vibe he walks into Bob Evans, you know what I mean? With a bunch of fucking strangers that don't listen to metal, and he just gets along with everybody. Because I, I can't say I've ever seen King in a non metal setting. Every time I've hung out with him and shit, it was at shows and shit, but he, he just. You know, he's a friendly guy. He gets along with everybody. So I don't know if he's morbid in the sense to where he wants a bunch of guys dying on, the, on the, a bus crash. But uh hates him some Metallica. So, hey, maybe so. Maybe they'd be the ones that would deserve it, right? So, yeah, King Folly's perfect world. Everyone dies in a bus crash. <laughs> hey, actually, uh, fucking Deceased is playing here next month. Uh, my goal is uh, to get um, King on camera. I, and the thing is, that I have a bunch of my Deceased stuff signed. And I'm probably not going to bring anything because like, now I'm like, King's like, I mean, we're not like best friends or anything, but we're kind of friends. I mean, I, I mean, I have the guy's fucking phone number, for fuck's sakes, and I always hang out with him. So I, mean, I kind of like a, kind, not, not kind of like a pair of ass cheeks to get anything signed. So I probably won't do that. But anyway, what I'm getting at is go to the show, and the goal is to get something recorded. I've been telling you guys this. It's, I try with Malevolent Creation, but Phil was a no show. I'm like, where's Phil? I show up the fucking love. So yeah, check this shit out, Devils. I show up the fucking Malevolent Creation, right? And the only original member is fucking Phil. All right, well, one guy. All right, bring it. I brought my Retribution LP. Retribution CD and both Hate Plow CDs. And the reason I brought Hate Plow CDs is to have them sign them as well and kind of ask uh, about Hells doing them on vinyl. Who owns the rights to like that? Because I can't get a goddamn straight answer. I want to do both Hate Plows on vinyl, right? Get there. And it was uh, Josh that's in the band and talking and uh, telling me, he's like, uh, Michael, where's Phil? He's not here. Like, what do you mean? Show, show goes on a couple hours. What do you mean he's not here? Where, where's he at? He's got to be playing. What do you mean he's not playing? Like, he's the fucking, like, what do you mean? Well, he fell off the stage. He hurt his leg. He can't, so he's just, he's not going to be here all night. Box of stuff in my arms. Okay. And then I go, well, I guess I'll go get a a, a shirt done. I'll, I'll get one of these retribution for your shirts. So, all right, yeah, cool, cool. I was like, uh, I need a size 2X. All out of 2XLs. All right. So I just fucking Eeyore my fucking way out back to the car. Took my box of fucking records and shit to get signed. Put it back in the car and then came back and then to watch the show. But nonetheless, my goal was to get that shit signed and ask Phil some questions and shit on camera film, right? But I got fucked as always. So I've been kept telling you guys in the hemorrhage was gonna do it from Maryland. Got fucked, fucking canceled, right? So I'll do it with King, but I won't have anything to have him sign because again, I kind of know the guy and shit like then, you know, buddies and have him sign it. I would do it if all the other guys were in the albums. Like, for example, bring in one of the Hell's LPs, like Let's say like uh, Fearless Undead Machines or something would be really cool, or maybe maybe even Supernatural Addiction is probably my favorite. So maybe I bring like the, the picture this we did or something like that, um, and have them sign that. But it's just one guy. It's just this King. If all the original if Les was there, Mark and shit. I mean, I would bring uh, I would bring uh, bring it. Then so we could all sign it. But yeah, just for one guy and kind of buddy, he's not gonna be up. But nonetheless, I'll think of stuff to ask. So I'll ask it, King. So uh, what do you think? Uh, if I remember, I'll ask. Um, get that on camera is one of the questions, you know, get some stories from King, maybe fucking ask about death, knocking the guy with the sweater out, death bash, you know, just shoot the shit with the little King, maybe it'll be a five minute video, 10 minute video, we'll see, shoot the shit, but maybe I'll ask him, hey, do you wish the entire uh, Metallica crew died in the fucking um, bus crash? <laughs> we'll get it directly from him, that's his perfect world, so yeah, we'll get it on camera, hopefully, devils, that's the goal, and I think that's the next band in line, the first one I'll get on camera, unless I get fucked again, we'll see. Anyways, that's it for this one, Devils. Questions, comments, concerns, anything else the fuck you got, whatever the hell's on your mind, leave it in the goddamn comments, and I'll get it fucking answered. 6 a.m., as always, see you tomorrow, goddammit.